Welcome back to this week's Razor Grid Presents. Today we have the classic and very beloved game, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Published in 1997 by Konami, Symphony of the Night was released on the original PlayStation. Directed by Toru Hagihara and Koji Igarashi, Symphony was the direct sequel to Castlevania Rondo of Blood and puts us in the role of Dracula's son, Alucard. The game also introduced greater options for exploration, RPG elements, and a more open level design than previous entries. The reason for the change came when Igarashi-san noticed dozens of Castlevania games in bargain bins around various Japanese game retailers. Previous entries had very limited replay value once completed and he felt that needed to change. Initially, upon its release in 97, the game was unsuccessful, but over time became a hit thanks to high praise by game critics and word of mouth. To this day, it's considered by many as one of the best games ever produced. The amazing soundtrack that helped the game become so popular among fans of the series was composed by Michiru Yamane. The final product was a mix of music containing classical elements, techno, new age jazz, as well as gothic and thrash metal. But why am I still prattling on? Let's dive into this masterpiece. Once again, The Razor Grid presents Castlevania Symphony of the Night.
So let's do a little trivia here. So originally, Symphony was developed for the Sega 32X. If that doesn't sound familiar, you were probably not around for that. <laughs> and made as a side story to the franchise known as Castlevania The Bloodletting. The game was eventually cancelled when the developers decided to focus their energies on the PlayStation. So check this out, for those unfamiliar with this, when a Medusa head, which is a very prominent enemy in most Castlevania games, uh, when a Medusa head connects with Alucard, he will of course turn to stone, but in very rare cases he will morph into a stone gargoyle. Pretty awesome. Try that out next time you play the game. Now I'm going to hit you with some history. According to the game's instruction manual, Dracula's full name is Dracula Vlad Tepes. The name Vlad Tepes is based on Vlad III Tepes, the 15th century ruler of the Wallachia region of Romania. History books tell us he later received the name Vlad the Impaler as it was said that he would impale his victims' corpses in public to frighten his enemies. Vlad was also nicknamed Dracula, meaning the son of Dracul, in reference to his father, Vlad II Dracul. And yes, it gets deeper, the name Dracul itself can be translated as either dragon or devil.
Here's some more fun trivia for you. So, when you look at the box art or package art for the game, you'll see Dracula's Castle. We're talking the U.S. release of the game. That castle is actually Mont Saint Michel, which is a real commune located in Normandy, France. For those of you who played the game, you might pick up on this next bit, but Alucard had the ability to use familiars in the game. One of these was a little fairy. Yes, a fairy. Like, not a, not, not a... Yes, a fairy. Not a flamboyant individual, but an actual uh, fairy. Alucard... If Alucard is seated or stationary for a long period of time, the fairy will stop flying around and rest on his shoulders, only to stumble off when he moves. It's actually kind of cute to see... And I don't use that word often. When using the rune sword, the word verboten will appear in its arc. Uh, so when you translate this to German, this word actually means forbidden. My wife's part German, so I've heard this word more than a few times. I don't know of a lot of people that have done this last trick, but if you insert the game into a CD player or a PC and attempt to listen to the music, a message from Alucard will be playing saying this. As you can see, this is a PlayStation Black Disc. Cut number one contains computer data, so please don't play it. But you probably won't listen to me anyway, will you? Thank you. 
There is a ton of trivia on this game, and this is going to be my last segment for trivia here because they're just, Jesus, there's so much. Um, so let's get into some quickfire trivia having to do with in-game content. And some of this stuff was only made apparent to me after I read it myself quite recently. <clears throat> The boss Olrox is based on Count Orlok, the vampire from the classic film Nosferatu. The lion, scarecrow, and tin man enemies reference three of the main characters from, you guessed it, The Wizard of Oz. The moon rod item in the game is based on the design of Sailor Moon's iconic weapon. I hope some of you know who, what Sailor Moon is. That was, and probably still is, a very popular anime for a lot of people in the 90s and 2000s, for those of you who don't know. The clock tower in the game is the same area from the previous entry, Rondo of Blood. And it's common knowledge to players of the game that Symphony must be beaten twice. The first part of the game is Dracula's Castle, as it might have been played in many other Castlevania games, but the second part of the game has Alucard traversing through an inverted castle. So if the different layout wasn't enough, it also had different enemies. It's pretty wicked. To coincide with these new enemies, we also got new bosses. Gosh, just, this game just gets better. Five of the six boss encounters were actually references to other games in the series. The boss, Gelamoth, originally showed up in Kid Dracula. Shaft is straight from the previous entry, Rondo of Blood. We got the doppelganger from Castlevania 3 as well as three falsified heroes from the same game, and lastly, we got Dracula himself. 